This is a Skymaster 2 meter Viper jet that I'm building for a customer. I thought firstly I'll explain a little bit about the model, what's going to go in it, and what I can see that's wrong that needs rectifying, and also what's good. There's quite a lot of both. So to start with what's going in it, in the stabilizers we're going to have uh, DS3401 servos, rudder 8411 and 8411s on the wings, a 579 which is a great little servo, as the steering servo. Let's start with the wings then. First thing you might notice, um, quality wise, is the colour variation in this servo hatch. I can't give it to someone looking like that, so I'm going to have to try and match it and spray it and polish it to a shine. Other than that, the quality of the wings is quite nice. Gear door fits quite nicely. There's a decent amount of glue used. Even some quite good quality plywood for the bearers, which is amazing really. But nonetheless, we've got a carbon Kevlar weave sitting under the retract mounts, just for some added strength, which is a good idea. Flaps and ailerons are live hinged. There's no initial binding, normally there is. It's actually it's, it's quite a well put together kit. Live hinge inside the ailerons, just a tiny little bit of fettling to get it to something I'm happy with and it'll be fine the uh, winglets that aren't on at the moment but I test fitted them, they're a really nice fit I couldn't have done any better myself so that's um, it's nice to see just a few modifications on the wings inside here we're going to have BVM Easy Airs these are basically you just plug and play you don't have to connect any airlines it'll do it automatically and a power box wing connection lead which will allow the two servos to be connected with just one multiplex plug making you rigging at the field really easy it'll all be sprayed this will be sprayed um, a grey I think with this two meter Viper I think the key is to try and keep it as light as possible they're not it's not a huge wing and I think that many of the great flying characteristics are down to the wing loading. So we'll try and keep it as light as possible. We'll have a light coat of just Halford's grey primer just to spruce it up. Same inside the fuselage. Talking about the wings, this is the undercarriage. It's nicely machined, typical Skymaster. They really produce some nice undercarriages. Things to watch, I mean this is an ARTF Pro version, but I mean I take it all to bits. It has to be sprayed inside anyway. And you do find some interesting things when you do take it apart, like, for example, the airline's kinked. It'll all be replaced with BVM airline anyway. It needs a 90 degree elbow on there, really. And I use BVM brake tubing as well because it's just too stiff, the Skymaster airline, uh, for the job, I think. It's personal preference, so. Also, with these retracks, especially on the less expensive models, you've got to be careful of this trunnion block. There's an aluminium sleeve that goes through it, it rotates around. And sometimes you can see the screw there. This is actually perfect and the motion's really nice. But sometimes you get them. And through this trunnion block it's basically stuck and the screw rotates around the side plates, which isn't really what you want. So you have to take it to bits and do some fettling to get perfect motion, otherwise you're going to have trouble with the gear. But other than that, I mean, it's it's nice, and there's just changing the airline. I'm quite pleased, really. Pneumatic operated disc brakes. Stabilizers, as I said, 3401s, which are a MIDI server, I know. But Ali Mashinchi has flown it with this setup, and he's not exactly conservative in his displays, so I'm happy they're more than adequate, and they'll fit in there quite nicely. Obviously, you can see there's no servo mounts, so I have to fabricate something. The fit on the fuselage is good. This is live hinged as well. It's quite nice. It's been well publicised. The finish out the mould paint job is dull to say the least, but a little bit of polish, teacup, and that'll be fine. I'll give my wife something to do, won't it? So, switch wise, I'm a great fan of these power box sensor switch. It's not a huge model, I mean, it's just a little thing really, so it's best not to overcomplicate it, keep it light. So, power box switch, a uh, Futaba receiver, I think 6014 is being sent for it, 
and uh, customer preference is all Nymines for this model, so 3300s for the receiver, and we've got quite a large 4200 Nymine pack for the ECU, hopefully useful nose weight. Going in at power wise, turbine we all know and love, the JetCat PATSE. You know, it's a good value, reliable turbine, nothing wrong, good match for the model. Perhaps if you had one of the newer, lighter weight, 20 pound fuss turbines lying around, probably be an even better match, but you know, it's great value and a good choice, really. Inside the fuselage, all the glue joints are great. In fact, the glue isn't even like what I've seen before. It looks to me like they've actually used higher sol, so the guys in the States, and like aero epoxy equivalent, which is good news. You, know, you can't move them at all. Not a very good joint to the outside of the fuselage. Canopy. Well, you can see the problem initially with this, so I'll just stick it on. Is there's loads of sideways flex in that. It's not acceptable really, so it'll have a uh, pin at the 12 o'clock position there. All the inside will be sprayed, just a light coat of grey primer, keeping in mind the weight for this thing. Hopefully those Nymars will be useful weight um, in the nose to get the CG. The other mod turbine may be slightly forward, but uh, I think I've got quite a weighted battery, so I think the turbine will probably be fine where it is. Just a little bit of fiddling. Those that haven't built a Viper jet before, is the access for the turbine is underneath. So it's underneath the model here. Now everything in there, I mean it's it's quite good really. Gear doors, quite a nice fit, perfectly acceptable. There is quite a bit of work to do on the finish. As I said, I'm going to tea cut it, but of course you've got this mould release agent and all the small panel lines everywhere. You have to get out of a toothpick, maybe. Should be a bit of a ball ache, but it should look good. The other issue I've got with the fuselage is the intakes. I don't know if you can see. Perhaps it's me being fussy, but there's a huge gap here and a ridge. So what I'll do is I'll sand, I'll sand this down inside here and then I'll put some car filler maybe P38 something like that some hard filler we'll sand it down and I'll spray it gloss white from around here so we just get a perfect finish on the intake because I think it's quite poor really also a slightly different shade of white but hopefully once it's all polished you won't be able to notice and it'll, it'll turn out quite nicely all in all I mean it's not going to be a spectacular build it'll just be just be a quick put together, hopefully. Probably a week on and off. All in all, I'm pleased with the quality. You know, it's not the most expensive jet in the world, and I think they produce something quite nice. So I look forward to seeing how it flies.